This is the pre-lab talk for Chem 120's experiment number 11, redox reactions. The goals for this experiment are to carry out several possible redox reactions and conclude whether or not they occur based on their, their observations. In this lab, we'll look at redox reactions under different pH conditions or acidic or basic conditions. We'll also take a look at reversible reactions and we'll get a chance to take a look at some complicated redox processes, the challenge of part four. We will also use standard reduction potentials to, poten to explain why certain redox reactions occur. This lab is a good application of our third understanding and thinking skill that observations lead to conclusions and explanations. The observations we'll make by taking a look at the reactions that we carry out and looking for evidence that a reaction has occurred. Remember that some evidence that a reaction has occurred may and for redox chemistry involving transition metals are most likely color changes, which we'll spend a lot of time taking a look at. We'll also be able to draw some conclusions about our reactions. Based on the color changes or observations that we'll see, we should be able to determine which processes have occurred, choosing them, choosing the reactions from a list of half reactions that are related to this experiment. Finally, we'll use the standard reduction potentials to calculate a standard cell potential which can be used to determine if a reaction occurs or doesn't occur. For today's safety pause, we note that we're working with several corrosive chem chemicals, namely 3 and 6 molar hydrochloric acid, 3 molar sodium hydroxide, and 3% hydrogen peroxide. We're also going to be working with chromium reagents, which are all kinds of dangerous. Chromium reagents are oxidizers, which means that they could also actually speed up or intensify a fire. They are also health hazards, hazards to aquatic life in the environment, and they are toxic. We'll be using nitrile gloves when handling them and disposing of them in special waste containers. In addition, most other waste will be collected in a special waste container as well. Therefore, our PPE for this experiment is, of course, to goggle it, wear our lab coats, and also wear nitrile gloves. Let's take a look at some important concepts and skills for this reaction, for, the, for this experiment. We'll be looking at several redox reactions in aqueous solution. This is coupled with the next experiment, which we'll be looking at electrochemical cells. We decided to first expose you to redox chemistry without having to worry about the mechanics of building our electrochemical cells. In this experiment, other than observing different redox behavior, You'll be asked to write separate half reactions for both oxidation and reduction based on the observations that you see and the list of half reactions provided. You'll also get to use these standard reduction potentials to calculate a standard cell potential for the redox reactions. You might remember from lecture that if the standard cell potential is positive, that means that the reaction is, is spontaneous. Therefore, you can use a positive cell potential to explain why a redox reaction occurs, even though you're not bu actually building an electrochemical cell. If your E cell is negative, this might help to explain why a reaction does not occur, because a negative cell potential is related, is related to, um, negative cell potential is actually related to to a, a positive delta G, deep signaling a non-spontaneous reaction. Finally, for all the reactions that 
you're going to encounter, you'll be asked to write net ionic equations. Therefore, you'll leave out ions that are deemed spectators. Some examples are sodium, sodium ions, and chloride ions. Let's take a look at an example so that we can see how we would apply um, our cell potentials to explain chemical behavior. The picture on the right shows a, re a reaction. In this reaction, we're placing a zinc strip into a solution of copper sulfate. We see that the zinc strip turns a bronze color when kept in the solution for a while. And we would also notice that the blue color gets lighter. How can we explain this phenomenon? Well, we could say that the zinc is being oxidized in this reaction. That is, the zinc solid is being converted into zinc 2 plus ions and two electrons. We can tell this by the deterioration of the of the zinc metal. If kept in the solution long enough, the, the bar will actually weaken at the interface between the copper and zinc. One visible change that we see is that the copper ions in solution are being converted into so solid copper, which can be seen by the lightening of the solution, the blue color in the solution, and the formation of, the, of copper on the zinc plating onto the zinc bar. If we add these, reaction, these half reactions together, we get an overall reaction that shows that copper 2 plus plus zinc ions yield copper solid, or sorry, zinc solid yields copper solid and zinc ions. Notice that this is a net ionic equation. The sulfate ion, which is the spectator ion, does not appear in this reaction. We can also calculate a standard cell potential. If you look at table A in your, in your introduction and experimental, you'll see three tables that, show a that give a list of half reactions and standard reduction potentials for half that occur in both in acidic, neutral, and basic solution. For the standard reduction potential for the zinc half reaction, which shows zinc 2 plus plus 2 electrons yields zinc solid, is a minus 0.76 volts. While the standard reduction potential for copper 2 plus plus 2 electrons yields copper solid is a positive 0.34 volts. Since we, since we know by our observations that zinc must be undergoing oxidation, we can reverse the half reaction seen in the, in the table to write an oxidation half reaction that matches our equation on the slide. When we reverse the direction of a half reaction, we reverse the sign of a standard potential. Therefore, the standard reduction potential becomes a standard oxidation potential. We can now calculate our cell potential by adding the, the reduction potential to the oxidation potential. Therefore, we add a positive 0.76 volts to 0.34 volts to get 1.10 volts. We note that our E cell is positive, and this, therefore, we would explain that this reaction is spontaneous. This is the sort of analysis that you'll go through for every reaction that we perform in this, for this experiment. Let's take a look at some procedural points. In this reaction, in, in, this, in this experiment rather, we'll be using 3% hydrogen peroxide which is photosensitive, meaning that it can be composed in the presence of light. You'll see that the hydrogen peroxide is kept in a dark bottle. And before doing the experiment, it is tested with iron-3 chloride to make sure that it is active and not decomposed. We look for the presence of bubbling, indicating that the peroxide is being oxidized.
In order for this experiment to be successful, we need to make sure that we're choosing the correct reagents. You'll notice that, for example, there is an acid acidified form of iron 3 chloride and a non acidified form of iron 3 chloride that are used in two separate parts of the experiment. When I carry out this experiment, you'll notice that I've labeled a lot of, I've used a lot of labeling to keep track of things. Many students in the past have missed certain observations because they've chosen the wrong reagents. It's also important that we mix reagents thoroughly. You'll notice that when I do the reactions, that I swirl the test tube to make sure that things are well mixed. We also note that some of the reactions take time to occur. This is particularly important in part four. So therefore, we don't want to discount a reaction occurring just because it's not occurring quickly. Finally, for you, it's very important that you make very careful observations. And this is when a video becomes handy. Feel free to rewind and review certain observations to make sure that you have everything down. If you're really not sure about an observation, feel free to send me an email, tam7 at pit.edu. Okay, and finally, it seems like there's a procedural change that I've already addressed in the experiment itself, so you don't have to worry about that. Okay, I hope you enjoy looking at the reactions, guys.